It's 6 p.m. on October 18th, 2022. I'm going to call this regularly scheduled select board meeting to order. First item on the agenda is citizens' comments. Is there any anyone in the audience that'd like to say anything or anyone on Zoom that has any comments? Hearing none. Uh, for additions to the posted agenda, we have an application from Charlie Major Enterprises for the Tassville Country Store for the uh, sewer hookup. So we'll talk about that with the Sewer Board of Commissioners later down the line. Uh, was there anything else anyone had to add or wanted to add? Okay. Uh, manager report. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, bring the select board up to date on the <laughs> issues we've had with um, excessive trash throughout the village during foliage, and we've, it's kind of an old topic in that you know we've dealt with it by putting out all the receptacles that we have and uh, putting on extra people over the weekend to pick it up. Uh, when uh, Casella isn't available to do it, or wasn't contracted to do it. They they do it for four days, and we've essentially been doing it for a daily uh, throughout the last couple of weeks, really. Uh, the Woodstock Elementary School parking lot has been reopened to the public on a limited basis. Um, it's uh, available 8 a.m. to 8 p.m weekends, holidays, and during the summer when the school's closed. School previously uh, closed it, and we had a meeting with them and uh, convinced them to, uh, to reopen it. Um, and- um, what about, Excuse me, what about overnight parking? There is none. They're gonna, so they're gonna put the rope up? Nope, not that I know of. Um, because uh, they are allowing people to park there to 8 p.m. So I don't think there's anybody around to, uh, to put the, uh, the rope or cable across after 8 p.m. I think the general concern was just people parking overnight into and not moving before the teachers right, start yeah. arriving at like 7. So, which makes sense. Which makes sense. Yeah. But I don't think there should be a problem on the weekend. No. No, not on the weekend. It wouldn't. But Unless there was snow removal right. involved, that was another issue. They wanted vehicles out of there for snow removal. Right. Um, um, so, uh, uh, a temporary full time town administrative <laughs> assistant has been hired. It's Brittany. Um, she's here this evening. We'll be taking minutes of this meeting, assisted with. Uh, Nikki will assist her doing that. Um, the National Park has applied for a grant of approximately uh, $200,000. Um, and it's for improving the trails in the park. And uh, the trail that's leading to Rainbow Center on Route 12. Uh, I mention this uh, because technically the town is the applicant because that's the way it has to work. And the money will filter through the town. It's strictly a uh, pass through if they get the grant and they do projects. Um, we pay the vendors and we get the money from the federal source. I think it was actually the uh, Federal Transportation Agency that uh, fund will potentially fund this. And I just want to give a brief update on the. Uh, the search for a new public works director that continues to go on with interviews and uh, we have been doing some recruiting as well. Um, and uh, we'll continue that until we find a suitable uh, candidate and hire someone. That's all I have. Thank you. Thanks. And Brings us to permits. Oh, did you have anything on finances? To uh, report, Tom? Yeah, we included a report in here, um, and it's up up till uh, the 13th of October. 
which means that the target date on the expenditure end that we're looking at, I mean, not the target date, the target percentage uh, is 28 <coughs> percent. Um, and, you know, looking down through this, I see several that are over that. Um, and with the exception of a very few, uh, it's all a matter of timing. In other words, um, the percentage is just, the, you know, it's, chronolo it's tied chronologically, but it's a nice uh, thing to quickly scan for. But if we pay in any in advance any given line item, um, it will show a higher percentage than um, than the 28 percent. Can we discuss some of them? I mean, I'm, I'm concerned office administration, um, yep. traffic control. Are these an issue of um, the emergency service building? Is it 200 percent? Yep. Uh, yeah, let's take them one at a time. Uh, office administration, we, that was a, there's a, several things going on there. Um, we did buy a lot of paper ahead of time and a lot of other uh, supplies that will last us through the year. Um, and we also, um, as part of uh, reestablishing the planning and zoning office, uh, we, we bought some furniture for that that was, uh, part of uh, the hiring package there, and none of that was budgeted. Um, so that's why that's uh, pretty substantially over budget. Uh, shouldn't increase much more than that throughout the rest of the year. And you had, I think, a couple more before the uh, emergency service. Traffic order. control? Traffic control. Oh, yeah, OK. Uh, this is one that is uh, that uh, excess expenditure is going to be covered by a uh, passive grant. That's our insurance company. They um, they do lots of things for safety, and uh, we purchased a lot of cones. And there were cones. Uh, oh yeah, your traffic signs. I want to say, but it was to the tune of the, the amount a little bit over seven thousand. So if, we're, if you take the eighty-seven actually spent. And the 7,000 budgeted, so the amount for the grant that's 100% matched is about that amount that's over. But, I mean, presumably we're going to need things through the rest of the year, and we've already gone through the budget with only 28% of the year passed. That's my concern with, with a lot of these items. Is well, the, uh, not so much in traffic control, yeah. and, and the overage isn't really going to be... It's uh, uh, part of the budget because the grant covers the overage. Does that make any sense? We'll see at the end of the year. <laughs> um, the emergency service building should have had 274000 and we've spent 557 Yeah, that's, um, that's just all the construction. And I think that... Yeah, that's, that's all I can say with that. I don't know where the 274 came from. Can we um, find out more about that? Because that's a pretty significant um, There's really not overrun. much more to find out. I don't know. You know, all I, all I know is that the project it, to date is, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand dollars under budget, and, and it's complete. Um, and there's no other line item. That was the line item in which everything was spent. So the 557000 that you see as an actual um, is really part of the construction, which is covered by the uh, monies that we borrowed. And the bond payment. That is also part of that. Um, um, 557,000, um, the bond payment came due um, during this fiscal year, so we had to pay that as well. Wouldn't that have been budgeted, though? I mean, we knew we had a bond not, payment coming. Not the, yeah, the bond payment, yes, but not the construction. That, that, I don't know, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't separated out as in a separate line item. That wouldn't have been a bad idea. 
but it wasn't done that way. Okay, thank you. Permits. Yeah, there's permits. So, so just, yeah, just give us a little rundown. So, as you probably know, we're planning to open. Or just, just come grab. Yeah. Oh, have a seat. Yeah. We're planning to open um, our retail dispensary in the Gallery Place building. We do have our permits from the zoning. I think we have. We've done um, our permit with the town for the retail. Um, we have submitted our full application to the Cannabis Control Board, the state board. And we have heard from them, um, and they have in scheduled our inspection for the 25th. Um, October or November? October. October. Okay. And I have my inspection scheduled with the fire marshal on the 27th. So um, licenses are issued on Wednesdays, so I expect to be licensed on November 2nd by the state. So I didn't want to have the, because we have our own commission, I have to also have permission from the Woodstock Cannabis Commission to open as in addition to the state. Um, so we have to open on Monday the 7th, maybe Sunday the 6th. So the only pro problem that I'm running through in my head is I don't think we have a form to issue a permit. Like one even created. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so we'll I mean, take a vote. We can take a, a vote. Minute. It'll be in a minute. And that should be at least a starting point for you. Yeah, I don't the know. Growing there's... permit, we got something from the state when you had yeah. been approved saying, okay, now right. we can approve it. So I talked to the state and they said that you could approve it like before them pending their approval. Right. Mm -hmm. um, just so that we didn't have to wait for the next meeting to get the right. approval from the town. But you do have the state approval now. I don't have the state approval until I have my inspection. Okay. But they have my full, my application is complete. I'm just pending the inspection. The inspection couldn't happen until I have my security system. Okay. So the inspection's the 25th, but they said that you, I could. Yeah, so we could have a motion that was pe pending, so, state yep, approval. pending state approval, yes. subject to state approval where right. we approve. Right. And I think we should also see the zoning permit just to make sure there were no conditions in that that we need to follow through with. Okay. Yeah. I don't have it. No, but you can, I mean, just submit it okay. between now and then. So pending state and pending zoning. Right. Okay. okay. All right, I'll make a motion to approve the permit uh, for, what's the name? Sunday Drive. Sunday Drive um, for the cannabis sales pending approval from the state and review of the permit from planning. Second. Motion by Ray, second by Susan. Any discussion among the board? No. Wendy has her hand up. Oh. Wendy? She's muted. You're muted. No. You're, mu you're muted. No. Can you hear me? Yes. No. Thank you. Um, just a, a procedural question on this kind of permitting. What happens or did all the local Woodstock Com Cannabis Commission get involved? Don't we have a local committee? That's so us. The, the, the Cannabis Commission became the, select, or became the select board. Oh, I missed that one. <laughs> all right. Similar to the Sewer Commission. <laughs> oh my gosh, I totally I totally missed that development. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> so any other uh, comments among the board? Um, I didn't know that. Call for a call for a, a vote. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. So I'll, I need to send you something. Permit? You can I think you would send it to send it to Tom. Send it to Ryan. Just a copy of what Yeah, and then, we'll, of, yeah. Yeah, and then we'll forward it around. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On their old business, the first item is acceptance from the scope of bridge over Gulf Stream. <clears throat> I think I 
look at. Which is the one, this pages side. seven. Right here. Um, it's got a cost matrix. My recollection from the presentation was that the alternative two deck replacement with an off-site detour was the, was the one that made the most sense. It was the cheapest to the town and, and their lasts, general recommendation. You know, it has a 50 year design life rather than the 20 if we chose alternative yeah. one. That's the one that just goes over Steinmetz Road, Steinmetz Road. Right. Yes. Yeah. So if there's no other comments or questions on that. I would move that we um, accept the state's alternative 2A, which is a deck replacement with offsite detour. I'll second it. Motion by Susan, second by Ray to accept option 2A in bridge for the bridge one project. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The speed ordinance was already voted on. This is just the um, updated language. You'll notice uh, Appendix A Group 2. So I just had a question. Yep. Since we approved those two road um, speed limit changes, do we have to reapprove the entire yes. ordinance? Yes. Yeah. Which is why we I would like the idea of being more systematic in the future. Yeah. Because it it does create a lot of work and re records retention too for for. I would like next, maybe even next year for us to start looking at, you know, because I think we're going to get more and more of these. Mm -hmm. I know my road, thankfully, doesn't have a speed limit sign because I wouldn't, I don't want people to know it's 35. Right. It, you know, it's, it's pretty much single lane in sections. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think a lot of these dirt roads really can't sustain a 35 mile no. speed limit. I agree with you. But the only thing I really did is. No, you changed Happy oh, Valley and yeah. Peterkin. And, but Happy Valley. Happy Valley was done a while back, yeah. um, but if you look, Appendix A Group 2 is now 30. Right. And Appendix A Group 2 with the old ordinance was 35, so which bumped 35 to Appendix A Group 3. It's just to keep keep the numbers sequential. But if that looks good to everyone, we can uh, pass this around for signatures. I don't think we need a motion for anything. No, we already passed. Okay. Right. Uh, so that brings us to new business, the EDC community grant process for 2023. Yeah, you want to come up? Thanks. Hey, Mary, how are you? Hi. Hi. Um, Carrie, I just I'm, I have two pages that I'm going to hand out in two minutes, and I just emailed them to you. Okay, thanks. They're pretty straightforward. I'm going to talk them through. Uh, Wendy, sorry, I didn't email, but it's going to be pretty obvious. You're not going to really need them. Um, the purpose of this is to run by you uh, how we would plan to run the community grant process this year. We don't normally ask for the select board's approval. We usually design the process. We're not technically asking for your approval today, but we want to inform you of how we're planning to do it because we're, we're, the process is going to be identical, but the amount of money we're allocating is going to be a bit different. Uh, as always, anything, any funding that we recommend has to, no matter what the process is has to come through the select board and that's not obviously going to change but i just but, but we spent the last 5 or 6 months after we gave our grants in march uh, which was a couple months late because of covid but we've been spending our time trying to identify priorities and what should the priorities be uh, and we have settled on five priorities and i'll share with you those priorities here this I don't think this will surprise you. Um, and we've established working groups to focus on each of those five priorities on the left. Increasing child care capacity for the town, increasing housing for workforce and people who work here, marketing Woodstock, rejuvenating the physical downtown area, which we define, by the way, as from Worthy to the rec center and from 
Vale Field to Billings Farm. So we're trying to go and we're trying not to ignore Billings. Uh, and then fifth is supporting events, uh, new events or growing existing events. Um, we have, those are the five priorities. And in addition to that, these are the programs that we run. The first one is community grants. We've done that every year since we've been founded. We, as you know, this year, you, you, we funded a grant writer to help support grant writing for the town, for businesses and so forth and not-for-profits. We've had the storefront incentive program for four or five years. We continue that program and we are evaluating a loan fund, which we approved and you approved spending to investigate the loan fund. We looks like we're going to recommend then that we fund the loan fund this coming year because it's legal and many towns do it and so forth. But that's to come. That's why there's a question mark. So we spent the last six months or so identifying these priorities. And we also have had feedback from the community that they want us to do fewer and bigger things to have more of an impact. And the EDC completely agrees. We have been talking about this for a long time. And so we're now about to implement it which is what we want to inform you of. And the way, if you just look on the second page, the two things that come from this, these discussions. The first, as I said, is to go big. And the idea is we're going to try to develop much fewer, much larger grants in the five areas and only in those five areas. As we have, just so you know, under discussion, we have given out $90,000 in housing grants this year. Two of those are for, to create new units of housing. We've already been instrumental in creating five units of housing. We haven't spent all of our funds. We think we're going to have a six. Um, that's at a cost of about $8,000 to the e to the EDC per unit, so even maybe it's that order of magnitude. It's not tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands. It's much, much less. We're creating a small incentive and it seems to be working really well. On the childcare side, we're, I think we can expect a proposal within the next three to four months on the order of $200,000 to create a large number of childcare spaces. And this is exactly the kind of thing that the community is asking us to do. And I mean, not that specific grant, but, but big, small number of grants. We've talked to all the childcare providers and they are um, developing in response, developing proposals to expand capacity with funding, they can expand capacity significantly. I mean, we're talking about 30, 40, 50 spaces for kids and for after school programs. So it's really significant. So we're doing that. The last piece of this puzzle, and, in, and that's the part that I don't want to say we're worried about, but that we've decided to make a change and we wanted to let you know if you strongly object, we'll rethink it. In order to fund those big proposals, we don't have unlimited resources. We have to do something less. We have to do less of something in order to do more of something. And the less that we're proposing is the community grant program. In the past, we've taken all of our annual funding, which has been about $300,000 a year, and put it toward those community grants. And those are gen generally smaller and so forth. What we've decided to do now is to cut back this year to 100,000. And over the next couple of years, we hope to cut that down further, assuming that we and the, the, the onus is on us to develop big proposals in the working groups that you that we approve and that you approve. If we don't do that, we'll go back to giving our money to the to the smaller community grants. But we believe that this is the this is what the community is asking us to do. It's strongly what the EDC wants to do, and so we're about to announce. But I wanted to come and tell you first to give you a chance to opine that this year we're running the community grant process exactly the way we did last year, uh, very minor change. We're not gonna require pre-applications. The same criteria as last year, the same review process last year. We have an on efficient online application, all that good stuff. Hopefully we'll do it a little bit earlier in the year. We'll hopefully finish and come to you by in February rather than in March, actually late March. But we're only gonna allocate $100,000 so that we can save if we get a $200,000 or $250,000 proposal for childcare, we know we're going to get some big proposals from housing. We know marketing is going to come back. The marketing investment that we made last year is extremely successful. As we mentioned to you, you know, we know the downtown rejuvenation group is putting together proposals. So I just wanted to give you a chance to say, oh my gosh, no, this is, we have some serious concerns about this before we go ahead. So is that, excuse me, but does that include, are you going to, Reduce the grant writing storefront and loan fund. Uh, the other two, or just the the grant writing, 
the storefront incentive program hasn't run out yet. So we, we, and we haven't had any applications in probably a year. So it doesn't have much left. The loan fund is separate. Now, if we start that, we, we would, it won't, the $100,000 wouldn't affect, we, we don't know, I guess is the short answer. All right, so the grant writing still would get. No, the grant writing ahead. has been funded for one year. Okay. If, if it were to extend, it goes away unless we decide to propose it. I, I, and we'll, I, I suspect we'll approve it if, it if it got a lot of money. If it didn't, we won't. What would be the timeline for needing to reapprove or needing to extend that? Extend the, the grant writing? Yeah. Is that, it runs that, that comes up sooner? Well, actually, yeah, that's a good question. Um, it, it runs through, it probably runs, I think, for another nine months. So it wouldn't be before so that. It's not critical to this other stuff no no i don't think it's critical to other okay. stuff I, I, yeah i know ray has some con, you know has some concerns about it but um or might have some concerns about it, i should say but no i think that's another nine months and i don't think we have a basis to evaluate it yet we're not going to propose we're only going to propose extending it if it's profitable so to speak so okay anyway so i just wanted to give you all a chance to to object or to raise concerns we're a little you know our concern is only just that people had a chance to comment there's the community is invited to this meeting. They were invited to our meeting. We've discussed this four times in four monthly meetings. You shouldn't be concerned, but if you have concerns. I have no objections that yeah. are coming to mind. Are there any others? I have no objections. I don't um, guess. Okay. But when oh, uh, and Wendy, I see you have your hand up. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Um, John, I'm sorry I haven't been to an EDC meeting, but is there a way you can outline how many community grants you give out and and what impact that has in some sort of global statement without being specific to one organization? Sure. Well, first of all, just so you know, there all of the grants that we have given out, we've given uh, are, are on the website, are listed on the website. Um, we've given out uh, 90 grants since our inception. Uh, the average size of a grant is about fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, something like that. Maybe maybe twenty thousand between fifteen and twenty. Um, we're looking, you know, in the working groups, we're looking for much larger grants than that. Um, the impact is, um, you know, is varied. I guess you know, the grant we gave to um, the Optimist Center didn't achieve anything. Um, the grant we gave for the picnic benches and the, I mean, the benches and the picnic tables and the garbage cans and so forth depends on your point of view. A majority of people in all of those cases were in favor of them. Um, we've given uh, $50,000 to the high school program to help plan the high school. That hasn't happened yet. We've given probably $75,000 or $100,000 $100, to child care organizations to help them, you know, basically to help local child care support themselves for various different purposes. Um, I mentioned the housing projects at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, I mean, uh, that's six of the nine of the 89 of the 90. And, and thank you. I mean, that's since inception. How many applications a year would you say? Application. Or for these grants. Yeah. How well, let's ideas? say of, of the 90 grants, we've probably had 150 applications, I want to guess. Over a long period of time or in one year? Yeah, no, no, over a long period of time. No, yeah. the 90 is, is since inception. Last year, we had 50, no, no, well, we had 50, 55 initial applications. And that got winnowed down to about 30, and we awarded about, I think, 19 out of the 30, okay. or 19 out of the 50. That, 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 was, that was the perspective I was looking for. So, okay. so in other words, you could still get nine, 19 applications. It's just going to be more competitive because you have a smaller pool. Or if the grants are smaller, it'll be equally competitive. In other words, if we get 19 oh, grants like for $5,000, we could, in theory, award all 19. I see. Okay, so you're going to set an amount of budget based on the big budget. You're going to shrink the allocation and go with, but you're not eliminating community grants at all. No, in fact, that's a, okay. no. And there were proposals to do that, and we decided, you know, okay. we didn't want to do that. Also, I just one last point: Com the community. We would love for the community to propose big grants in one of our five in any of our five priority areas, and we welcome that. 
it will can only strengthen the process and we will give the but but we're not going to leave it just so you know we've never had ever out of 150 applications a grant for more than fifty thousand dollars and for a request for more than fifty thousand dollars and we've only had two out of 150. so we're forming working groups with community members on them in order to create big applications but if anyone come and we will publicize if anyone comes forward with a big application in child care housing marketing rejuvenation or events we will give it total in fact mm. i would favor it because it saves us the work but if we want to do big things we have to generate big big requests and that has you know it's only starting to happen with edc working groups sorry if i'm taking too much time. no you're I just wanna, thank you thank yeah. you Okay, so if there are no objections, there's no vote needed. I just no, want I don't, to get your feedback. I don't think there's any objections. Thank you very much. Brings us okay. to dispatch console bid. Is Robbie on or is Dave Green? Robbie's on. Hi, good evening, everyone. Good evening. What's page uh, 21? Starts on page 21. You want to uh, give us just an overview of the equipment that we're looking at? Sure. And the, 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 the equipment that we're looking to uh, replace is the two dispatch uh, radio consoles. Um, and there's also a uh, radio repeater that is in the South Woodstock Tower. Um, so the just to give you some background, the dispatch current dispatch radio consoles, one um, is really old, probably more than 20 years old, um, doesn't function. Uh, the other radio console, the primary console we use now is also obsolete. They don't even make parts or um, support it. And at the same time, you can't use the two consoles at the same time uh, because they they backfeed each other and they're not compatible. Uh, so in other words, typically we only have one in use, but if we had another um, critical incident or another uh, Irene, for instance, where we would need to be dispatching multiple units, uh, multiple departments at the same time, uh, we wouldn't be able to do that. We don't have that currently don't have that function. So this proposal would replace both of those consoles with these new consoles. Um, and then the other tower repeater that's in the proposal is in South Woodstock, which allows us to transmit from the main station to the South Woodstock tower when we have uh, emergencies in South Woodstock. That particular repeater uh, could fail at <laughs> It's, it's old, it needs to be replaced, needs to be upgraded and replaced. And uh, if, it, if it goes down, essentially we'll have no uh, radio communications in South Woodstock. And so that's why we were, we're uh, asking, uh, proposing to replace those. The, we put out an RFP to uh, radio vendors and we only had one vendor uh, respond back to us. That vendor actually happens to be the vendor that uh, services our radios now. Uh, CBC Paging out of Rutland. They're close by. They've been very responsive. Um, anytime that we've called them to come in and, and work on any of our radios. And we also got two um, quotes from different lenders. One is a, like a municipal lease or municipal lending company. They came in at uh, like 6.5 or 6.9% uh, interest. And then we also sought, um, I think it was Bar Harbor who wouldn't give us a quote. And Mascoma came back with 3.9, hold on. 3.6. Yes. So that's kind of a brainer. Uh, in terms of the financing. Currently in the communications budget, there's um, $56,000 in capital reserve towards uh, replacement of this equipment. So we're asking to use that as the 
the first down payment. And then going forward after that, it would be, uh, would be for five years. Um, but the first year, of course, would be the down payment. So then there'd be payments of, I think it comes in at 29,000 and change. I'm trying to find it, the email that I had. It should be in your packet, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it's 29, 29.8. Yeah, thanks, Ray. Yeah, so 29.8 is what it comes in at. So I, I have a question. Yep. Um, Tom, did you say there's still money in the budget of the, the EMS building is coming in under budget? Uh, and can yeah. some can some of this? I, I know you can't put the South Woodstock repeater on that, but can't we put? Can't we have that pay for the consoles and stuff as part of the new construction? Um, no, we couldn't because um, the way the bond was written in the in the article, it was for the building. And uh, we couldn't use the funds from that bond for anything that's not part of that building. Well, the console down. is. I'm sorry. The it's not tied down, is. though. I think it has the console is I mean, it sits on a desk like a computer. Oh, okay. So it could be. And didn't all the furniture and stuff get paid for yeah, with the bond? I mean, yeah. No, uh, I don't know. Oh, we do have money for the down payment in the capital funds for this. No, I realize that, but I'm just thinking if, we, if we're coming in under budget on the EMS building and if we, we purchase furniture, why can't we purchase the consoles? And I understand, you know, the, the South Woodstock is going to be a different item, but right. it's, it's not in the building, but why can't we fund? I think there is a way to do it. I don't know how to. It would just let, I mean, we could lessen the payments going forward if we have capital now. Yeah. I don't know. I do I have one other question, Robbie. Um, the bid from CVC is all quantity one. I think you wanted to get two units. So uh, that, I think the bid included the two units. So the numbers include the two units? Just. Yeah, it's probably, it may be hard to see on the, on the, uh, the system page where it has quantities, but it was for two units. Okay. Including all included laborers. With the South Woodstock Tower, is that is that putting in a whole new tower or just a piece of equipment on the? Is, that, is this the tower near Fletcher Hill? That's the one. That's that's the one on Fletcher Hill, and it's not the tower itself. It's the actual radio transmitters inside the little hut that sits next to the tower okay there's supposed to be a new cell tower being put up near that area i don't know if that helps at all yeah yeah cell tower i think is going to be at the wood south woodstock fire station possibly but it's not going to be on fletcher hill to my knowledge now someone on i do know someone on fletcher hill has applied to put up a cell tower okay okay I will say that uh, the fire department is looking at some um, additional equipment to possibly be paid for by the excess funds in the construction of the emergency service building. And they just don't have all the information yet well, uh, to make a presentation to the uh, select board. They were hoping to do it tonight, but they, they don't they couldn't get the information pulled together on uh, on the exact cost of the equipment so so if you know different than this equipment then if they're, if they're getting it out of the building but out of the building bond if yeah. they're getting equipment it's no different than this equipment if anything it's a little worse because this equipment stays <laughs> in the building <laughs> so I, I think we need to find out what we have for excess funds and see what we can do to reduce the bond, getting a bond for, for the rest of this. Well, we don't know what the exact number is. 
That's what I'm saying. We need to find out what the exact number. No, the exact number of what's the remainder of the bond. That's what I'm saying. We oh. need, that's what we need to find out. How much money is excess right. over the construction cost? Yeah. Okay. okay. Robbie, what about what about that um, equipment in South Woodstock? That's pretty critical, isn't it? Yeah, that is uh, that. Like I said, that could fail at any time. Yeah, uh, it does. There's zero radio communications in South Woodstock. So if there's know, a how much is that, Robbie? That one is as part of it. You cut out for the number. Yeah. <laughs> the important part. Somebody was texting me as I'm talking. Um, I think it's in around the twenty thousand dollar range. So we could spend that out of the capital reserve now, right? Right. Yeah. 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 And that would have no negative effect on the future funding of the the console limit, right? So it's, it's coming out of the same. Right. And we don't need to worry about the law. Right. right or interest rate right yeah <laughs> eventually but not yet i mean i i, I don't you know I'll, I'll make a motion that we spend that money out of the 56k for the uh repeater in south woodstock and then looking to see what we can do to for the rest of this out of the loan for the so, ems building so ray has made a motion to fund the proposed repeater out of the capital reserve from the dispatch budget. Um, is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, motion by Ray, second by Susan. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Say aye. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> So and the opposed. You, what you're looking for me to do then is just to, to come back to you if once we find out what's left in the building bond. Yeah. 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 We can, you know, for, for you take 10 minutes and do that next Tuesday too. If yeah. you, if you yeah. Can yeah. get the information in time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can do oh, for the, uh, the 20 because we're here at 5 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, if, you know, it take 10 minutes. Not even after that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll do. We'll do. Thank you thank very you much. Very I much. appreciate that. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Robbie. All right. All right. Um, council built. So now we got bylaws, the town historic preservation commission bylaws. We'll start. On page 31. I believe this is the first time we're looking at the at these bylaws, correct? Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I have a I question. Have a question. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, is there a particular reason that this commission has its own set of bylaws? I, no reason for it not to. I did look online to see because in the for to set up the commission, the state had um, had drafted an ordinance, and and I thought these bylaws were not as on point as they could be. So I looked to see if they had done the same for bylaws for historic for town historic preservation commissions, and I did see in a lot of other towns also their. Historic Preservation Commission to have bylaws. Thank you. So I, I don't think that doesn't exactly answer your question, but it does say we we're not unique in in having them. Right. right. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. And Wendy has her hand up, Joe. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Wendy. Thank you, Joe. Um, to that point, does it have to do with uh, the certified local government aspect? The reason there are bylaws. Um, I'm part of the the village historic commission, which is a sub, you know, related to this commission. But I, my understanding is we're setting up a system through which we can apply for grants for the municipalities, but we need to be a certain kind of certified local government. 
And I'm right. wondering if that's why bylaws are in order. That was my guess. Yeah, it's very good. My, I'm yeah, guessing, guessing too. It's <laughs> a very good thought and I'll go with it. <laughs> I'm looking. Uh, has the village adopted bylaws yet? Uh, not to my knowledge. Not yet. Okay. No. There, is this going to be? Um, yeah, there are two separate. Two separate. Yeah. Two separate um, commissions that meet at this. I think we'll be meeting at the same time. But with two. The, no, same commission. Just same stage. commission. Right. Same. The state rules on the um, commission say that they have to have written, written rules of procedure, including right. conflict of interest, interest provisions, incorporating the detailed requirement. It, so it does seem like they have to have some written mm -hmm. rules and regulations, which I think they just decided to do it in the form of bylaws. So the state does mandate, it, mandate them to have yeah. a separate thing in writing. I don't have any changes that I no, I would recommend. You know, I'll make a motion to accept the uh, bylaws for the Town Historic Preservation Commission. Second. Okay. Motion by Ray, second by Susan to thanks. Or to adopt the bylaws. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Diesel bids. <laughs> so we put the diesel out to bid as you can see three bids. Yep. Two of them, Evans and Suburban, are um, bids that um, the pricing would float with the uh, market rates, and then they would add on a given amount. Uh, Evans talks about 20, 26.69 cents a gallon and suburban um, is doing a lesser amount. They are just saying the municipal rate, which I couldn't find what that is. Um, that is... Uh, a state contracted rate. Right. Uh, the state I... buys or goes out to bid for all their diesel and um, and municipalities can participate in that. So that that's what they're talking about. But without knowing what that number is, how do we compare the three bids? You can't. That's that's the point <laughs> of this. Yeah. Um, well, they have a and it changes now. with the indexes in the Evans letter, it says in the last sentence of the first paragraph, we're presenting RAC plus fixed ad or pricing below for your review. Right. So if you wanted to go with that uh, RAC plus pricing, you'd, you'd pick um, the company that's offering um, the lesser amount of add-on uh, per gallon. And um, Suburban looks, if you look, yes. Susan, down. I know they have the, the 4.4. 4. 4. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, am I reading that as there per gallon? Yeah, I, I would think so. No, it was Dead River. 4.8. Yeah. See, they don't need, or Suburban doesn't even give us a 
add-on amount. I thought they did. Um, but their price will fluctuate with the municipal rate for the state. It will fluctuate with the market. Whereas Dead River in option two is giving us a fixed price of $4.11 per gallon. And that was at, as of October 11th. <laughs> Tomorrow it could be more. And I would wager that it, it will be more because mm -hmm. prices have been going up. Mm -hmm. So if the board feels that prices will continue to go up uh, throughout the next year, um, we would be much better off to purchase um, approximately 14,000 gallons or, uh, yeah, 14,000 gallons as opposed to this eight that they have in the contract at, at their fixed rate. Were they only willing to sell us eight at that fixed rate? No. They were no, willing no. to sell us more? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't know where they came up with eight because we asked for between 14 and 18,000 dollars. <laughs> um, so I don't know where they came up with eight, but I think I'm sure they'll sell as much as we want to buy. It yeah. says it says in a quoted well, it says our quantity you've determined. Where do you see that? Everyone's quote, second sentence. In option two? Option two, no. Okay. Two. Um, or quantity. Yeah. Yep. So I say. Quantity you determine. Right. I would, I would make a motion to go with Dead River at 14,000 gallons for option number two. Seems the best to me. I think it is too. Yes. Is there a second? Yes. All right. Motion by Ray, second by Mary. All in favor of accepting Dead Rivers for diesel Aye. at 14,000 gallons. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Motion I do please. note that the diesel is one of the few things that were tax exempt. Yes. So, yeah. at, you know, I think Dead River probably the Vermont company is a little bit more savvy about that than Evans. Yeah, Evans, Evans didn't, they, they just said plus taxes we would have to submit and the W-9, but sounds good to me. Yep, Dead River. Uh, warning article fundings post COVID. Um, I think for special articles, we should just require the legal amount of signatures before submitting as in the days of old. Right, is, I'm sorry, is, does this apply to, what's this? this? For, for the town, town yeah. articles, oh, okay. special articles. Special articles, I agree. Or town meetings, so it says to submit a special article, it would need the signatures. The signatures the that petition. for the petition at starting from scratch and yeah. as, as it was in 2019 and earlier. But come to the ones that are applying for money out of the budget. I don't think the budget should be for our town budget. We don't really have. No, we have we have your funding to. I think there's some there I think there's some duplications. Yeah, where there's there some agencies that have an amount in the budget. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. And then, yeah, and then they go for a uh, article of what as it. well. Yeah. Right. But. You know, it's in the budget. You guys control that. You can say yay or nay or put any amount in the budget that you want. Right. So that will be our procedure since I don't hear any. We need to make, we don't have I don't think we have a motion. No. Um, I have, does anyone else have any other business until we move on for board of sewer commissioners? Yeah. So. For the Board of Sewer Commission's first on is the abatement request from Fulkerson. That's page 42. Where it starts. The 
Tom, is this your note in the beginning? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, so as this letter states, this people bought this land, or, yeah, they bought this property and, um, and, and the previous owner did not pay the, um, the bill on time, as I recall it, it's been a while. Um, and then they were then given the um, bill that showed a um, non-payment charge, which included an interest and a penalty. Um, and they came in and said, you know, we would have happily paid this. As a matter of fact, they did pay the base charge, but they wanted to know how they could get out of uh, not paying the uh, interest and penalty. Um, and we said that only the select board could make that determination, but we recommend that you forgive that. You know, those are monies that are really not in the, we do allocate a little bit of money each year for interest and penalty in the budget, but um, only because we know we're gonna get some, um, but it's not like it's money that we really would be losing otherwise. And I was just going to say, from reading the letter, it sounds like they took possession of a prop or took ownership of the property, but not possession of the property. And the letter went to the physical address. And so it went unpaid because it went unreceived. And I, you know, as I think you know, I always vote against these because, as in my former career as a real estate attorney, the attorney is supposed to mm. let you know at closing that you have this upcoming bill and that you need to be aware of it. And um, if the attorney did not, then I feel that it's the attorney's onus to pay the penalty and interest. And that was just always my practice. So I vote against these. Okay. I think I did it recently <laughs> as well. No. This might this might be the folks. I'm yeah, I'm, 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 I'm assuming it is. <laughs> All right. If you want to come up and speak, maybe. Is that helpful to see? Yeah, you can come up with some around. microphones. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I should have brought you up sooner. That's right. Okay. I'm Steve Fulkerson. This is my I'm wife, Linda. Linda. We're the owners of the property in question here. <laughs> and uh, appreciate you taking the time to put us on your agenda. Um, the, the, it's an interesting process here, again. Um, yes, we do knew, did know that there were sewer bills. We, we knew that that was, and we, we, I believe it was in the, um, in the transaction that the owners, previous owners were to compensate us for that, um, that bill. We just have never received any bill. So um, we had a challenge with, with our property address that also I think plays into this. We, we purchased 540 West Woodstock. We couldn't receive any mail because the, the post office wouldn't deliver mail to 540 West Woodstock in 540. our name. So we went through, my wife went through a lengthy process to try and establish that we were the owners, that that was the correct address. And it was multiple sessions of trying to get our address at 540 West Woodstock. 542. It, it became and 542 West Woodstock. And the once we went through that with mm -hmm. the mail, uh, with the US Postal Service, we finally started getting mail to 542 West Woodstock. So it's been a lengthy process of trying to establish who we are. We've been here, yeah. we're happy to be here. <laughs> So if I can just say to your point, I understand where you're coming from. Um, when we signed all the documents on January 28th, as you can appreciate, it's like 
two hours of signing over going through 100 plus pages. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I'm, I'm sure it was mentioned. I know everything that came to our attention, we endeavored to follow up on, including the whole address thing and making sure the town listers had our name. And, and that's where I discovered the post office didn't have the E911 address. And so I had to go, I discovered that the town listers sent me to the fire department, sent me to, you know. So I, I, I offer that just to say, everything that we were able to follow up on, I did. And if this slipped through in the 100 pages and two hours of signing, my apologies. Um, it would have been nice if among other things, the previous owner or their attorney had passed these things along but we weren't even able to get possession of the home until June 16th because of an existing lease that we weren't informed of until we were, mm. I had already contracted to sign the property. So there was just a, 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 unfortunately a lack of communication it would seem in several instances, not your fault, not our fault. And so we're just asking for consideration here because as soon as I got the bill, I was down here, I paid the, principal wrote the letter and I know the check has cleared for the principal so we would have paid it mm -hmm. if we had any clue that there was a sewer bill out there and there was a sewer commission oh. and a sewer <laughs> yeah we just if we, we know now we won't it won't ever happen again but we just we've been made well, every we never effort. we never received the bill from anyone so mm -hmm. we were aware that there was a sewer bill I mean there's a sewer department we were told that we were just, and we knew that it was months, it's not uh, billed monthly here, it's very different. Than yes. So it was a whole different process for us to say, wow, um, mm -hmm. not Same receiving with the one. Same with Stock uh, Aqua, we had a problem there. We ended up paying their bill. It, it, it the previous owner's, previous owner's bill. Previous bill because the, anyway, that's not your business. <laughs> we love it here. We yeah. just, <laughs> Try and be good, good citizens and pay our bills on time, but we just had simply had no idea where to go or there was something with hanging out there. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. Yeah, I would entertain waiving the penalty and interest. I'll, I'll make that motion. Motion to waive the penalty of. $236.40 and interest of $266. Is there a second? I'm sorry, is that the full amount for the four bills? It's four bills. It there are four, there are four, four. There are four bills. Can I that's the amount that we were working with. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's your, that's it, the Okay, sorry. Of Thank the, you. Of the to interrupt. Here, did, you say something? She's muted. Pardon? Pardon? I didn't know if you were had said something. That was I I heard something no, no, that, that was my that helpful was my assistant. assistant. Okay, very good. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we have a motion. I'm looking. Is there a, a second? A second. Okay. Motion by Ray. Second by Carrie. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. One opposed. One opposed. Be motion carries four to one. <laughs> where, Thank you. Where are you? Where was your residence? Five forty-two. Yeah. We live there. The we Peter Valley Dog Grooming. We're right before yes. them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Uh, yes. I had. Yes. There was. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Post office. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. That was a funny Thank story. You. But, yeah, yeah, Thank you very much. It's not funny it. when it's your, <laughs> your house. <laughs> uh, so next on is the uh, Charlie Major Enterprises. Todd Ullman. Still on? Angela. Still on earlier. Angela's on. Angela. Oh, there you are. Right in the corner. Yeah. Thank you. So this is an application to connect the Tasso Country Store to the um, to the sewer or to increase usage. Right. It's to increase usage. You're already connected, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, and you go over the um, findings from, was it 
Jenny Oster? Or? Yeah, it was Hoyle and Tanner. Um, the uh, Public Works Department wasn't certain that that little uh, wastewater treatment facility in Tassville could handle um, this additional amount of uh, wastewater. So um, Hoyle and Tanner analyzed this and determined that that plant could in fact handle this additional uh, flow of both gallons and biological ox oxygen demand. It's something the board should keep in mind for the future. Um, they had to do, Hoyle and Tanner had to do uh, some interesting research because uh, there's no original prints <laughs> and uh, for this plant and they had to really dig into this to determine that uh, it would be okay. Um, and so future uh, large connections mm -hmm. uh, in that to that plant could could be an issue. Something for everybody to just keep in mind. But uh, they were confident this would not be an issue. So uh, the applicant paid the bill, the uh, charge for the permit, and uh, it's up to the select board to approve or deny. I have a question. Hey, I move to your state. Oh, go ahead. Do you have your state permit? I S. I S was in. Um, our state permit is getting um, passed along after this meeting. So there was a motion from Kerry to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Yeah. Right, motion by Kerry, second by Ray to approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. 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 Motion carries. So. Wow. <laughs> so that's uh, that's, that's all set, Angela. Yes, that's great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a nice night. Which leaves minutes from September 20th and October 4th. I had two right. changes on September 20. Yeah. Um, under E, the bridge presentation, it, uh, number three says we'll discuss alternative route next meeting, and we were, it, we're oh. we actually are discussing uh, the bridge construction options. Alternative bridge construction options. Yeah. So I just thought that should be clear. And then there was one more. On page 50, under H1B, how's that? Mm. It should be, this is the second one this summer, not their second one this summer. That has to do with the road, the speed limit changes. Mm -hmm. We had two, but not, we didn't have two from the same people. Right. So with those amendments, I would move we approve those minutes. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And that brings us to October 4th. Did anyone have any comments on the October 4? Um, no minutes. No. No. Um. I'll make a motion to accept the October 4th minutes. Okay. Motion to accept. Is there a, a second? Yeah. Uh, okay. Second by Mary. All in favor? Aye. 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 And now that it's this next Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then that brings us to adjournment. I make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye.